Let's give the Lord some praise. If you received anything from him. I just said, let's give the Lord praise one more time. If you received anything from him. Let's give the Lord praise if you're expecting to receive something from him. You're you're in expectant, you're expecting something. And I've learned that we need to learn how to praise God in the good times. Now, when I say that, you may say, well, yeah, anybody praises God in the good times. No, nah, there's a lot of people that when they have good times, they take off. And they forgot what God set, set them free from, save them, heal them from, and then they just take off. I'm good now. Like, I'm good. That's a statement that we, we, we say in the world. I'm good. Are you good? I'm good. Right? And be careful that you've lost your gratitude. Get this all over at that point. The more we're grateful, the more we get more of his presence, his power, his revelation. Being grateful is also intentional. And these next in September, we're going to go through a 30-day growth challenge. Tomorrow, I'm spending all day long writing um, the growth journal that we're going to, I'm going to, all day long from morning till night, I'll be spending time going through that journal verse by verse in the first six chapters of John. We're going to ask questions. You're going to be able to go through that. There's going to be com personal commentary that's going to be there to help you understand it. By the end of these 30 days, this is what's going to happen. It's going to kind of be like me sitting down with you and doing a Bible study for 30 days with what I see in those scriptures. You're also going to get in, the, in those 30 days, every day you're going to get a devotional video on the scriptures for that day from a part of our staff and our teachers every day. You're going to study those scriptures yourself and take notes and see what God is telling you. At the end of 30 days, you're going to be transformed because you're only transformed as your mind is transformed. One of the biggest problem that we have nowadays is we're exposing ourselves to a lot of bad content and we're starving ourselves from good content because the bad content is fleshly. What I mean by that is it's sensual it's it's things that are like eating cotton candy you like them but they're not good for you have you noticed that stuff that you that that's healthy you don't like so much but in the end if you can develop an appetite for the right things it'll change your life forever and so we're going to be intentional we're going to fast for 30 days that's in september we're going to fast for 30 days and this one's going to be a a little easier fast all we're saying is you could eat what you eat but this is what we're saying is you're not going to drink what you want to drink we're just going to drink water for 30 days as with your hot dog <laughs> or your taco or your burrito right oh, i want a large coke with a lot of ice no i want a beer with that no come on we're gonna get rid of that somebody's gonna get set free from an addiction to sugar alcohol come on beer you're gonna be set free in these next 30 days and then every every sunday and wednesday we're gonna have a diet of showing up to church it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool i would invite your friends and relatives to join us it's gonna be great we've never done this as a church 30 days just going through a portion of scripture verse by verse and and going through a growth journal it's gonna be really really good and then you're going to, every one of us are going to participate in at least two outreaches in 30 days as well. So we're going to give you, there's, we're going to have over 30 to 50 outreaches. You're going to be able to participate, I mean, at least two if you want. So I'll, I'll just two, some of you guys are evangelists. You could, all 50 if you want, I don't, but two for sure. What we're going to do is get, the, the, the purpose of studying the word is to get to know God better, be transformed into his image and then go out there and touch some people. Our church is healthy if you're equipped to do what God has called you to do. We are not a traditional church. What I mean by that is, a traditional church is the pastors do the ministry. 
in a biblical church, the church does the ministry. And we're the church. I'm in it with you. You guys got to understand that? You are the ministers. You are the evangelists. You are the workers. And we're going to train you to do that. And we're going to set you free from bad thinking. And we're going to transform you into thinking like Christ. So you start living like Christ, feeling like Christ, and walking in the power of Christ. You guys get that? It's going to be really good. That's going to be 30 days of gratitude. Every day, you're going to write down at least one thing you're grateful for. Like, write it. Because you know what we're going to do is get rid of all the negative thinking. Some of us are stuck on negativity. You got to break that demonic mindset and how you break it. The Bible says you enter into his courts, we enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Come on, by the time we're done, we're going to know God, love God, love his word, and come out of it with an addiction to the Bible. Come on, we need some Christians that love the Bible more than they love YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever they got out there. You know, uh, we got to be careful. Someone sent me a video the other day on, and, and it was a video that they wanted me to see, but I, I pressed it. I don't, I don't have like Instagram, all that stuff, but um, I pressed it. And then when I pressed it, all kinds of other stuff came with it. And I go, man, that, that video is attached to all kinds of lewd, nasty stuff. And I know this, if you're watching that video, you're also scanning through a whole bunch of nasty stuff, whether you're clicking it or you just, what is that? We're going to break that cycle in the next 30 days. And we're also going to fast some social media too in those next 30 days. So you guess you just connected to Jesus. Are you excited about what God's going to do now? Yeah, I, you are a byproduct of what you expose yourself to. That's all. God has created us that what we expose ourselves to, we absorb. And if you're exposing yourself to bad, comp bad content, bad company, you become a byproduct of what you're, uh, what you're exposing yourself to. It's time to expose ourselves to the glory of God, the presence of God, times in prayer. Come on, the Holy Spirit. Get filled with this Spirit. Come on. Are, are you ready to glorify God in your life? And ba stop barely making it. God doesn't want you to just survive. He wants you to become more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who strengthens you. Let's give him one more praise. Come on, I know I'm advertising. And one last thing, ladies. Ladies, ladies, I'm telling you, we're, we're going to go into three, it's really two, three days of in the presence of God. And we're, go, we're, going, into the, we're going into the presence of God. And if you make your mind up to get in the presence of God, you're going to get delivered. You're going to get set free. You're going to get a word. You're going to grow. There, there's only one time a year that we say, ladies, let's separate ourselves from this world. Let's get together and let's glorify God. And I guarantee you, if you come ready to receive, you're going to have a God encounter right here in this church. We got to sign up. No glory for those that don't show. It's waiting for you. We're not doing another women's conference. It's cute. It's not cute. We're going to war and we're getting the presence of God. I guarantee you, I'm going to be ready. And if God took out Sarah, Sarah Jacobs to put me in the mix, I'm going to tell you this. God has something powerful for you women. So get ready to receive from God. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to get ready. And I guarantee you, it's going to be worth the price of admission. It's going to be so worth it. You're going to probably have to say, can I give more? And you can if you want. We're not going to say, well, no, you can. Okay. All right. You guys ready? Now, I know I just said, if you're here for the first time, we're, we're really talking about the, really the subjects of the day and the end times. Are we in the end times? And we're discussing mindsets that, that the word of God points, would point to. And he would say, like, you know, if you see this st stuff happening, you're probably in the last days and I'm coming back real soon. And, and as we've been on this, on this series for the last month and a half or so, every time we've come, all it does is just verify we're in it. 
we're in a real corrupt world today. And I, I'm not no negative Nancy. I'm just telling you, we're in a, right now, we, there's a dark world out there. And we got to, right now, if you don't watch it, you'll get dark in yourself. Bible says there'll be a great falling away. Not us. We're not going to fall away. We're going to get brighter. Come on. We're going to get wiser. We're, we're going to have more conviction. Today, what I want to just be, I, I'm going to just two parts. That's it. Because I got this week. And next week, next the Wednesday after that, we're on our 30-day gro growth challenge. It's going to be good. This week, I'm going to talk about abortion in the last days. And the reason I want to equip you, because it's, it's all over the news. And our teenagers need to know this. You need to know what, the, the, what does the Bible say about this subject. Today, we're just going to, right now, just, I'm going to do a soft entrance on it. And the next week, we're going to, really dive even deeper into this and we're going to answer a lot of questions that you might have i'm going to tell you this i'm not bible thumping i'm bible teaching it's a big difference i am I'm, I'm just here to lead you to green pastures come on good shepherds lead you to green pastures still waters places of nourishment and strength i want to, i want you to get there and this world doesn't have that philosophy they live for a moment they live for pleasure and they get in trouble Okay, and then they try to find a way out of the trouble that they got themselves into because they weren't led by principles or the word of God. They were led by lust, pleasure, and culture. That's not us. Okay, you guys get that? Okay, let's pray. Father, we just thank you. I thank for everybody that's here. Anybody that's here for the first time, I thank you, Lord, that as we're discussing these subjects, that everyone will be here to learn, not to criticize, not to look at each other, but to receive from you. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us and be our teacher in these last days. We need you. We're teaching on these subjects to equip your church to be able to stand, have some conviction, because there's a spirit of confusion that's attacking everyone, including the church, because they don't know your word. They don't know what your word says about subjects, so they're just taking on the standards of the world. The Bible says, be, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I thank you, Lord, that this word is going to renew our minds, so we are absolute, we are absolute about what we believe, that we're unwavering, that we're not double-minded, because the double-minded will not receive anything from God. We are sure about what your word says. We're going to stand on your word. We're going to live for your word, and we're going to be salt and light in this dark world. Help us to help others as we get to know you and what your word says. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. End times and abortion. I'm going to say a few things about abortion. Abortion is one of the most significant moral issues of our day. Emotions run very deep when it comes to this issue. It is tempting to consider this issue from the perspective of our culture's standards. It's tempting to look at it from our cultural, cultural standards. We covered that last week and, and setting our morals based on cultural standards is a word secular humanism. That we're not setting our morals based on what God's word says. We're basing our morals based on what culture says. Christians want to be informed about abortion based on the word of God. Everything that we base our beliefs, our morals, are based on a foundation of the word of God. Jesus taught this and he said this, a wise man is the one that hears my sayings or learns what I teach and does it. A fool is the one that builds his house on sand. That means he hears my teachings, but he does nothing with it. He doesn't do it. So when the pressure comes, when the temptation comes, it all falls apart. We are here to build a life, build our emotions, build, build marriages, families, cultures, churches by hearing the word of God and obeying it. It doesn't mean that you won't have pressure. It doesn't mean you won't be tempted. It doesn't mean you won't have struggles. But the promise is if you do what God tells you, you learn the word and you apply it, this is the promise. You will stand and it won't fall apart. You won't continually start over all the time. You're going to build, establish, build, establish, build, establish. Not build, start over, 
build, start over, build, it all falls apart and start over. How many are interested in growing for the rest of your life? That you go from one level to the next level. You're going to have to learn how to do this. Apply the word of God and get, make every decision based on scripture. Following Jesus is following the word. It's a hot topic today. Hot topic. Um, the Supreme Court in a five to four decision overturned Roe versus Wade, the landmark ruling that established the constitutional right to abortion. This is really unheard of. It was talked about, but would this be overturned? It was a law for over 50 years. Spiritual warfare on this subject. But I believe there's been believers praying about this. And what nobody ever thought would happen, happened. It got overturned. We could be quiet about this, but I, but I really believe that we need to understand the times that we're in, that there's a way being made where it looks like there was no way. I even think that's a prophetic, a prophetic uh, uh, decision that was made that God's going to begin to overturn things that you thought could never be overturned. We're getting ready for the biggest harvest we've ever seen. And the church needs to be aware of the season that they're in. And you got to make sure you're on the right side of issues. If you're on the wrong side of issues, this is what it means. You're agreeing with the devil. Either you're walking with the Lord in agreement with the word, or you're agreeing with the devil and walking with the devil. Let's decide. Who are you going to serve? Roe versus Wade, 1973, had permitted abortions during the first two trimesters of pregnancy in the United States. Almost half the states are expected to outlaw, outlaw or severely restrict abortion as a result of the Supreme Court's decision on a Mississippi case known as Dobbs v. Jackson's Women's Health Organization. I want you to think about this. Over half the states are going to make abortion illegal or make it very difficult. Are we in that place? I know it's hard to believe that because we're in California. Because in California, it's like we're in our own world of immorality. But there's other states that understand this issue. Now, I'm going to understand this. I am not just going to assume you're on the right side of this. or the, I'm not assuming anything. I'm going to begin in these next two services to just take you through and then you make a decision at the end. You might be thinking, well, you're going to have to convince me. I'm not going to try to convince you. I'm going to go over the issue, what the Bible says about it, and we're going to let the Holy Spirit convince you. Now, that's very important for you to understand as a Christian. Your job is not to convince people or become a master arguer. It's the Holy Spirit that transforms hearts and convicts people of sin. If you could talk them into something, they could be talked out of it. You need to depend on the Holy Spirit and the word of God. I'm not going to strong arm this issue. I'm just going to go through it. So we're just going over some facts. Now, the definition of abortion is just simple. And it's, I say simple because this is what it says. This is a dictionary definition. And, but we're, we'll get into also what Christians believe and some people believe abortion is. It's the removal of an embryo or fetus from the uterus in order to end a pregnancy. We're talking about scientific, biological definition. It is the arrested development of an embryo or an organ. Now it sounds a little bit worse. You're arresting development. What you're saying, no longer will we allow that fetus or embryo to continue to develop. We arrest the development and we stop it. Now, under the definition of abortion, I saw this definition that was right with it. Aborticide. 
I understand this is not Christian definitions. This is just Webster's Dictionary. It is the destruction of a fetus in the uterus. Now it sounds a little bit more dangerous. The destruction, the destruction of a fetus in the uterus. Now some, some will take it further, and this is what they call it. The killing of a baby or a life. That is the only tr true, that's only true if a person is there with a distinct life. I want you to understand, you cannot kill something that does not exist. So we're going to go over this argument on both sides. I'm going to give you some thoughts about abortion right now, just thoughts. And these next two weeks, we're going to dive into these thoughts. Now, I'm not, I, I, I would be ignorant to believe that there's not, there's not a group of women in this room that have had, have had an abortion. Now, this teaching is not to put a guilt trip on you, to depress you, to make you feel like a bad person. The, at the end of this teaching is to let you know, no matter what sin you've committed, whether you call it a sin or not, God loves you, he'll forgive you, he'll make you whole, he'll make you complete, just as if it never happened. The only one that can heal your emotions and set you free from the past is God. Any focus on the past without God's ability to heal is just regret. And if you feel like you've regretted some decisions that you've made, God is not trying to put salt on your wound. He's trying to heal you of your wound. Big difference. A doctor will look at your pain not to cause more pain even though while he's looking at it it might be painful but the purpose is not to cause you pain is to is to find out what's causing the pain and heal you even though looking at a subject of the past might hurt it's never meant to hurt you it's meant to heal you but if we don't address these things it'll continue to affect your future because you haven't been healed of your past Come on, amen? Okay, thoughts about abortion. These are his thoughts. Abortion is not wrong if it is a clump of cells with no soul. If we are just getting rid of a clump of cells, it is nothing more than removing a cancerous growth. But, but, if it is more than a clump of cells and it's a soul that has been created by God then it is murder think about that now I'm not telling you it's murder we'll discuss what the scripture says but if it's not a person you can't kill a non-person we're going to find out within these next two weeks what the Bible says and even what science says when life begins we're going to equip you as a church to be able to have a conviction about what God's word says about tough subjects. Most churches do not want to discuss this because there's too many emotions attached to it, but we cannot be a last day powerful revival church if we're side skirting issues. We're not going to do it here. We're going to be a powerful army that's walking by faith, not faith in faith, faith in the word. Well, my church believes that. Forget about your church believes. The Bible says. Well, my pastor said, forget about what my pastor says. The word of God says, God says, that's it. Because your church can be wrong. Your pastor can be wrong. Place your foundation of faith and what you believe on the word of God alone. Not culture, not opinion, not feelings, not convenience, the word. This is why we're weak overall. Our convictions are based on our feelings. Our convictions are based on culture. Our convictions are based on YouTube. Our convictions are based on influencers. But our convictions are not based on the word because we don't even know what the word of God says.
Number two, my body, my choice is valid if there isn't another body in the woman. This is a major statement. If you watch any pro-choice parades, rallies, this is, the, this is the rally. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. And they're, they're, for miles, they'll be saying that. And what they're saying, the woman has, it's her body, therefore it's her choice. And we're saying, right, you're 100% right if there's only one body. If there's another body, you don't have a choice to kill another body. I'm not saying right now there's another body. We're going to find out what the Bible says if there's another body. We're going to find out what science says if there's another body. But if there is another body, it's not your choice to eliminate the other body. That's the truth. You guys understand that, right? We're entering into this, into this subject pretty soft but very clear. You understand that? When I say soft, you know what I mean by that is? It's kind, it's thoughtful, it's wise, we're doing surgery. I'm not gonna give you an opportunity to be offended because I was careless in my delivery. Right now we're just covering facts, right? And today what I want to cover is just three prevalent, say with me, prevalent, last day sins that have led to our abortion culture. This wasn't part of the culture a hundred years ago, but it is today. Our world, the United States of America is massively divided on this issue. Is determining our politics. Who we're voting for, obviously. Who our friends are. Our conversations. You might lose some friends when you say, I believe that abortion is a sin. If you say that. We're going to find out if it is, but if you say that. There might be some people say, I want nothing to do with you anymore because you don't agree with me. Imagine that this belief is so strong that it will cause us to cut off our friends. Christians never do that. Even when someone doesn't agree with you, are you crazy? Your job, don't cut them off. Your job is to reach them. Amen? Come on, right? Okay. Three prevalent last day sins that have led to our abortion culture. We're going to get this from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 and 4. It says, remember this. There are some ter terrible times coming in the last days. Say it with me, last days. That word terrible means there'll be times of distress, great physical pain, Emotional pain, suffering, sorrow, danger. Why will in the last days be a time of sorrow, danger, physical pain, emotional pain? Why will that be the climate of the day? And I'll tell you why. The more selfish, the more self-centered we become and the more sinful we become and the less of God that we have in our lives, the more depressed we become, the more dangerous we become, the more angry we become, the more self-destructive we become. And what the Bible is saying in the last days, it will be terrible times. Look what it goes on to say. People will love only themselves and money. We're going to We'll dive into that, but people will love only themselves. What it means is they'll love themselves alone over anyone or anything. The issue is, is me, myself, and I. I don't care about you. I care about me. It's a philosophy. It's a mindset. They will be proud and boastful. 
and boast about themselves, their conversation will be self-glorification, not God-glorification. You'll know when someone has this mindset because all they do is talk about themselves. Let's keep going. They will abuse others with insults. They will not obey their parents. They will be ungrateful and against all, against all that is pleasing to God. They will be against what's pleasing God. That means there'll be a defiance. God says this, I don't. And not only do I, I don't, I won't, and I am against God's standard. This is what I believe. I'm not lukewarm about this. I'm very clear. I hate God, his word, his principles, the church. I am against it. Be a mindset. Against all that is pleasing to God. Look at this again. They will have no love for others. And the reason they won't have any love for others because they will only love themselves and refuse to forgive anyone. They will talk about others to hurt them and will have no, no self-control. They will have no self-control. Say it with me. They will have no self What that means is they're going to be under the control of something else. They'll be under the control of lust, anger, pleasure, pornography, drugs, hate, violence, pride, but not God. No self-control. They will be cruel. That means heartless. They'll hate what is good. People will turn against their friends. There'll be no loyalty. We're going to be living in, a, in the day that they will, they will cancel you, unfriend you, because you are messing with their philosophies, their thinking, and their pleasure. I had a friend a couple years back, and I ministered to her for years. And based on my take on a certain biblical, biblical stand, she unfriended me. Uh, she disowned me and said, you'll never, ever be my friend again. And she kept her word. I don't know. She's like, I can't find her on Facebook. I'd be looking for her. <laughs> Why would you do something like that on just a subject? There'll be no loyalty. They'll hate. There'll be no, no loyalty. And look at this. They'll turn against their own friends. They will do foolish things without thinking about thinking and will be so proud of themselves. Instead of loving God, they will love pleasure. Instead of loving God, they'll love what? Okay. So the, we're going to cover the three sins that are mentioned here, three of them, that I'm just going to pick three of them out that have led to an abortion culture. Number one. Only loving self. It describes a person that views self-gratification, self-preservation, personal success over anyone or anything. That means I love me and my own success, my own pleasure, my own self-gratification, my own self-preservation over you or anything. We see this with David. This love is willing to sacrifice others that are in the way of personal success or happiness. I want you to get the attitude. It will sacrifice others that are in the way. If you're in the way, I will get rid of you. Even if you're a baby. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. One evening, this is David, a king, he's under this self-love, got up from his bed and walked around the roof of his house. From there, he saw a woman bathing. And she was very beautiful. When your goal is self-love, 
Your goal is self-gratification at the expense of everyone or anything. Look what he says. She was very beautiful. So he goes on the top of a roof. He looks down. He sees a woman bathing. He goes, I got to have that. Look what he says. So David sent for his officers and asked them who she was. An officer answered, that is Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam. Look at this. She is the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. So who is she? She's a, the wife of Uriah. She's married. She's married. Now, you know what that means? When the officers told the king David this, he should have said, well, she's off limits. But when love of self is the goal, nothing's off limits. Because the goal isn't right or wrong. The goal is self-satisfaction, personal success, personal gratification. It doesn't matter. Nothing's off limits. That's not my philosophy. Look what he says. That's, that's your eyes' wife, homie. <laughs> David sent messengers. He ignored that. To go and bring Bathsheba to him. She had just been purified. She just purified herself after a monthly time of bleeding. She went to David. He had sexual relations with her. And then she went back to her house. Look at this. Later Bathsheba became pregnant. She sent word to him saying, I am pregnant. How did she get pregnant? We're acting like we don't know. Well, the reason she got pregnant, there's a reason, he had sexual relationships with, relations with her. The reason we have so many unwanted pregnancies is we're having sexual relationships with people without commitment. Well, why would I do that? We're at, a, we're at a place of society that we have sex with people and we really don't know their name. After you had sex with them, what's your name, by the way? You're laughing because you know it's true. Why would you do that? Why would you give yourself to someone that doesn't even know you, you don't know them, there's no commitment. Why would you do that? There's a reason we do that because self-love is the goal, not right or wrong. So now this self-love gets crazy because self-love will kill others in order to avoid the consequences. It says, I'd rather kill you before I die to my sins or have to go through any inconveniences. So what David does, because he's driven by self-love, you know what he does? He sends a letter to his main general on the front lines. He goes, hey, without, this is a battle plan. I want to sacrifice Uriah so I could cover up my sin. It's a mindset. Abortion falls under that kind of mindset. I'd rather kill the consequences than deal with them. And you could sacrifice consequences all day long, but understand this, as you're doing it, the consequences are still there. The emotional damage is still there. And you're right now arrested in your own development. Well, I don't have to, I, look, I'm, I understand that sometimes doing wrong is painful. But if you keep running from the pain of growth and the pain of consequences, you'll never grow. See, we want growth with no process. And that's what happened to David. He goes, put him on the front lines. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to rush the wall that you're attacking of the enemy and then pull back on them, leave them there hanging so he could die. 
Because if I could eliminate Uriah, I could take his wife, and this is what I could do, erase my consequences. Self-love will sacrifice people for sin. God's love will sacrifice self to reach people. In John 15, 13, Jesus' love is willing to sacrifice himself to help others be saved and be blessed. Self-love sacrifices people for self. Jesus' love sacrifices self for others. We are either leaving, living by one philosophy or another. In John 15, 13, it says this, no one has greater love. No one has shown stronger affection than to lay down, give up his own life for his friends or give up his own life for the baby. Hmm. Now, why'd you just say that, Pastor? I'm going to give you a, a crazy statistic on abortion. This is just facts. Remember, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Googling Christian facts. These are stats from Gallup polls that actually study abortion. And this is what they found out. The main reason why women have abortions is that they don't want to be inconvenienced by a baby. Now, why is that important for us to know because the arguments are always the fringe examples. And we'll talk about those next week too. But they'll say, well, what if someone got raped? Do you know how many abortions are, are actually the reason that they aborted the baby was because of rape? It's less than 1%, 0.5%. It's a, it's a small, small number. I'm not saying that number is insignificant. What I'm saying, that's not the reason why we have abortion. Look at this stat. 98% of abortions today involve women who simply do not want to have a baby. These are the reasons that they give. These are... These are the only reasons that they give. The only reasons. Number one, I'm not ready for another child. The timing is wrong. Now, I want you to think about this. If this is a human, it is a baby, it does have a soul created by God, what we're saying is, I don't care about that. What I care about is me. I'm not ready. We seen a video this week. I, I, I'm not going to show it because it's, it's just, it's just, just bad. But it, it's saying this. There's a young lady that looks. She goes to the doctors to see her baby, and she sees on the ultrasound the baby's heart beating. And she says, "This, I'm not feeling her. I'll abort her." Now, I know, I want you to get this, that anyone that's had an abortion here, you probably did not say that, but I want you to just get this. We're living in a world that's become a more callous, more heartless, and the reason is, the less we have of God, the more callous we become. I'll put my head in the sand and act like it doesn't exist. Let me justify what I'm ready to do. I just don't feel it right now. Another reason, it would interfere with my education and career plans. Well, think about that. And this is real. You're going to school. You got pregnant. And now you have to deal with the pregnancy and school. And you're barely passing your classes now. It's easy to say this. Career, education, over baby. And, and, and this is my statement. I want you to just get this. Think about this. If you're not ready to raise a child, why are you having sex? Because sex comes with responsibility. 
So I want the I want the pleasure with no commitment, no responsibility, and I want to erase all consequences. Is that the kind of character you're going to build a great life on? I don't think so. You're actually compromising your own personal character and development. What do you say, Pastor? What I'm saying is, when you mess up, fess up, and go through the process of reconciliation because the process is going to refine you. Any sins that you make other people pay for, you keep doing. What we're saying is, I want to sin, but I don't want to pay for it. Let's let the baby pay for it. I told you guys this the other day. I went to Best Buy a year ago, and I wanted to get, I ordered kitchen appliances. They're hard to get. I don't know if they're all coming from China. They're stuck on, they're stuck on the ports. I don't know what's happening, but you take a year to just get something. Finally, the year comes up, and we're saying, where is it? And we found out that they canceled my whole order with all the money I gave for all the appliances ahead of time. So they had all my money, and I got no appliances. I went down there, and I said, guys, I need my appliances. My kitchen's done. I've been waiting a whole year. And they said, okay, we could do it. We're going to find a way to do it, but it's going to cost you $7,000 more. I go, you're going to double my price. So you made a mistake. You canceled, you canceled my order, but you want me to pay for your mistakes. So I got the manager. And I go, manager, come here. So I brought him in. I go, look, I'm going to teach you something about business. When you make a mistake, take personal responsibility, bite the bullet, pay the price, so that you don't do it again. But if, because if I pay for your mistake, you won't log it, you won't change your systems, you're going to continue doing it wrong because as long as I pay for it, you didn't feel it. Eat the 7,000 and change your policy. Because if you're doing it to me, I guarantee you, you got a hole in your systems, you're going to keep on doing it. And this is what's happening with us as a society. We're not getting better because we are for forfeiting, aborting our own process of growth. You know how you grow? You make a mistake. You learn from your mistake. You repent of it. And you start growing. Well, man, I, that, understand, wrong comes with a sting. But all I know this if you stop numbing your sting, you'll start growing and you'll stop touching that thing. Right? Okay. There's another reason. I can't afford a baby now. Should have thought about that. All I know this, if, you, if you'll just trust God, Christians... God will take care of that, that child, no matter how you look at it, is still a gift of God. <laughs> to you, it might have been a mistake, but not to God. And that baby that might be on the way, it's on the way, might be the biggest blessing to your life. It could change your whole life if you just go through a process and say, ah, I got to eat it. I got to go through the sting of this. It might be nine months of learning, nine months of school, nine months of getting a higher spiritual education. But I guarantee you this, I'm not going to continue making that mistake. And by the time it's done, every devil in hell is going to regret that. It's going to regret that I went through this because I'm coming out wiser. I'm coming out stronger. I'm coming out more holy. And I'm coming out with some, some wisdom from God. I had to go through the process. I had to endure it so that I could grow through it. Stop sinning and trying to kill the consequence. Because understand, the consequence isn't going anywhere. Because what you didn't deal with, you have to deal with in the future. It's still part of you. Still, you cannot graduate if you haven't learned the lessons you need to learn right now. And what you continue, if you continue killing the consequences, this is what happens. You continue living a habit 
of making these wrong decisions and what you did there, you're going to do again in your future. This is the other reason. I'm having relationship problems. I'm sure you knew that before you had sex with them. I know, I know, I, I, I know, but he told me he loved me. Yeah, but he was cussing you at you. He was, come on, he wasn't living for God. He was, he was abusing you. He wasn't faithful to you. But he told me, he told me he loved me though. So I had to go ahead and give into it. Yeah, give in into it. And now you have a baby. Let's kill the baby because I have a relationship problem. You have a relationship problem because of the choices that you're making. And you'll never solve relationship problems now or in your future if you're not willing to go through a process now. I know it's hard. Come on. I know it's hard. I'm not talking about easy stuff. But picking up serving Jesus is not easy. After you made a mistake, understand this, church. We are not a church that's going to judge you. We're going to help you through the process. Just because you got pregnant doesn't make you any different than the other person that didn't get pregnant doing the thing and hiding it. Understand this. If you got pregnant, you're going to go through it. We're going to go through it with you. We're going to get you to the other side. And you're going to come out with a testimony that's going to destroy the enemy. Another reason. I don't feel mature enough. I feel too young. These are the re only reasons. I feel too, I feel too young. Wherever well, you're too young, why are you having sex? Well, well, uh, I got hormones. <laughs> what are you living for? Self-gratification. You live like that, you're living like an animal. You're living like a dog that's in heat. You're being driven by your instincts, not right or wrong. You'll never build a great life like that. You got to practice self-restraint. And if you don't know how to, come on, as a believer, I'm talking to believers right now. If you do it God's way, you don't have to deal with all this extra junk. Life is hard enough. And sabotaging yourself. Less than 2% of abortions are for the reasons of mother's life is at risk. Less than 1% was a victim of rape. I'm going to end it with this. I, I, I thought I was going to get through the three thoughts, but we just got through one sin. Next week is going to be good. I tell you, you're going to be like, what are we? You know what I'm doing? I'm equipping you. This stuff's on video. You know, you know what that means? That we are going to know what God's word says about it. And not only why we're doing it, we're doing it because of self-love. Well, I'm going to show you this quick video and then we'll end. But this is an Olympian. Since nine years old, her goal was to be a gold medalist. Her opportunity finally comes up. Two weeks before she goes to Beijing, she finds out she's pregnant. And she feels like this a decision has to be made. Either it's a gold medal or have this baby. So we find out what she does because her highest goal is self, not right or wrong. She chooses and she justifies having an abortion. But we're gonna find out that while she aborted that baby, she also aborted her gold medal. And she'll tell you. Now, the person that you're hearing right now, the year that she went to Beijing for the Olympics, she was undefeated. She was the favorite in the 400. She never lost a race until the main race. She's going to tell you why she didn't win. The crazy thing about this testimony, she still has not repented of it. She's just sharing her story as a Christian, how abortion was a good choice. But wait till you hear what she says. 
She's contradicting herself. And right now she's still, because she has not admitted that it was a wrong choice, she's still struggling on the inside. She just wrote a book to justify abortion. Let's take a look at it. And eight, yep. you were the Olympic favorite. Yeah. You literally did not lose one race throughout the duration of that regular season, yeah. if you will. You were headed to Beijing where the Olympics were to take place and you had to make one of the toughest decisions of your life. Can you take me to that moment? Some young girls might think of like their wedding day and you know, have all these different kinds of dreams. But from the age of nine, the one sole dream that always felt very real to me was becoming an Olympic champion. For me, in that moment, when I found out I was pregnant, right before I left for Beijing, I felt like I was in an impossible situation because I knew I was with my forever. I was with my soon-to-be husband. I knew I wanted to have a family with him. Um, but I also wanted to be an Olympic champion more than anything. The day before I left for Beijing, um, I had an abortion. And as a woman who also identifies as a Christian woman, uh, who tries to be Christ-like, I never ever thought that I would be in that situation. It was, it, it still is really hard for me to talk about it, but um, I am grateful, however, that I had the choice. I am grateful that I had the choice because um, although it was very, very hard for me and I think it was a big part of why I didn't win gold because I didn't think I deserved it. Wow. So the one race I lost, the Olympic final was the race I wanted the most when I lined up. I didn't feel deserving of Why being not? Olympic. Why didn't you feel like you deserved it? Because I had just done the one thing I thought I'd never do. And I feel like good things come from God and I didn't deserve that. Can you imagine standing on the start line on the precipice of achieving your lifelong dream and you know what you just did two weeks ago? It was awful. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I don't know what... Now... Can you see the conflict within her? She says, when I lined up, the thought is in my mind, good, thing comes, good things come from God. And how can I be deserving of this gold medal after I just did what I did? I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. The truth was she was divided internally that that decision affected her emotionally. She didn't know how to deal with it. She still doesn't. The majority of women feel immediate relief after having an abortion, but 81% will develop mental health issues, and there is 261% chance of alcohol abuse and 313% increased risk of drug abuse, trying to numb the pain. And today you might be thinking, what do I do? This is what you do. No matter what you've done that you're conflict within, you're convicted about, this is what God says to you. If you commit an abortion or any other sin, this is what God says to you. Isaiah 118, come. Let's talk this over, says the Lord. No matter how deep the stain of your sins, I can take it out and make you clean as fleshy, freshly fallen snow. Even if you stained, if your stain is red as crimson, I'll make you white as wool. I love this. God's not saying, hey, let's talk over the abortion. He says, let's forgive you of that. Let's start over. Let's start with a clean slate. Let me clear your conscience. Let me give you a new start. It's okay. Do you know God wants your conscience clear? Whatever sin that you're dealing with today that you have a guilt issue for, stop doing that. Stop beating yourself up and stop doing what this Olympian champion did. Disqualifying yourself from all kinds of blessing because you're so aware of the mistakes that you made that you're self-sabotaging yourself. I don't deserve it. If you only knew the things I've done and God says, I know it, but I want to talk over with you. I want to talk about this. I'd love to forgive you. I'd love to set you free. And I, I want to restore every single blessing and dream that you have in your life. Isn't that great? I, I found out, we'll end it with this. I, I, I checked and I was saying, well, can you be pregnant and actually still be in the Olympics? And I found out, of course. And, and when, I, when I looked it up, 
when I looked it up, they, they even said something. This is what they said. They said that absolutely, 100%. And, and, and they said this, that, that people have actually, there was a girl that she was four months pregnant and she received the gold medal. In 2014, Sochi Olympics, an Italian speed skater, Martina Velsapina, won the bronze medal while pregnant with twins. Now, what's crazy is that she could have, it was two weeks, she could have won the gold medal and still had her baby. But the devil told her, you can't have both. And God says, yeah, you can. Amen. Let's all stand up. Are you guys receiving something from God? Come on Sunday too. I'm telling you, bring some people. People need to hear this subject. I have Christian close us out. I'm gonna dis we're just going to dismiss in 90 seconds. Give 90 seconds for us to respond. Today, if you want to go ahead and be forgiven or healed, and he says, come, let us reason together. This is what I'm going to ask you to do. Come and receive it. Don't leave here with your shame, your guilt, or your past. Your record can be cleared. Your slate can be clean. Receive the gift of forgiveness, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of new life. You could have it today. Your past, old things can pass away. Everything can become new. When God says he forgives you, it's a brand new start for real. Just as if it never happened. God is good. That's available for her. It's available for me. We're not picking on her because we've all messed up. But the idea, you can never get right if you don't say, okay, forgive me, Lord. Let's do that, okay? Christian, close this out, please. I'm going to receive that word tonight. Before, before anyone else leaves, please, we ask, we kindly ask that we give an opportunity for everyone to respond in this moment. Before anyone else leaves, we, you know, there's something the pastor mentioned earlier about this woman feeling like she didn't deserve something. And that's actually the definition of what grace is. Grace is God giving us something we don't deserve. We deserve a lot of things, technically speaking, for the mistakes that we've made. And I've made a lot of them. And I know you've made a lot of them. I may not know you personally, but I know you've messed up. <laughs> As have I. And because we've sinned, the deserve price for our sin is death. It's what we should pay. And by death, I don't just mean dying. By death, I mean separation from God for eternity, which is hell forever. That's the deserved price for the sin we've committed. And this sin can't be paid for by doing good things. I can't pay for my sin by coming to church, by being a good person, by helping someone next to me. That's not, there's nothing I can do I could spend 10 lifetimes doing good and it won't pay for one sin I've committed. What we deserve for the wrong we've done is eternal separation from God. But because God loves us so much and because God is love, he gave us his grace. And grace is giving you something you don't deserve. We deserve death. But he chose to give you what you don't deserve. Forgiveness. Salvation. Freedom. Healing. A new start. You may feel like you've done too much or you've gone too far or you've separated yourself a little too far to be in reach of God's love. But I'm here to let you know that you are not far enough for the hand of God. Tonight, God is extending his love to you. And I believe that if you've come in this room feeling guilty or feeling ashamed or recognizing that you've sinned and that you need a new start, there's good news tonight. That God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you while you were still a sinner so that you can be saved and set free. There's nothing you have to do to buy that or do anything to earn it. All we have to do, all you need to do is receive it tonight. Receive by faith, salvation, 
put your faith in Jesus Christ tonight. You can make him the Lord of your life. But what do I have? Do I have to go and change? Do I have to be a different person first and try and, and come back? No, there's nothing you need to do before this moment except surrender your life to Jesus tonight. The, 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 the Bible says tomorrow isn't promised, which means we don't know if tonight is the last night we'll lay our head on our pillow. We don't even know if we'll make it all the way home. Let's not gamble away our eternity. Let's make a decision tonight to follow Jesus Christ and be forgiven of our sins and receive a brand new start. You're saved not by what you do. You're saved by putting your faith in Jesus Christ and repenting of your old life and turning to Jesus tonight. Tonight you can be saved. Tonight you can be set free. Tonight you can be forgiven. Tonight you can be delivered from shame and guilt and all the pressures and the, and the, and the, the, the pressure that you've been dealing with. You can be set free. Will you give Jesus your heart tonight? Let him be your Lord. I'm going to count to three. And if tonight you're saying that's me, I want to receive Jesus. I want to give him my heart. I want to finally stop avoiding this and I want to finally just run to him and give him a chance. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, he's saying, trust me. I'm not going to let you down. God won't let you down. And he's not going to let you down tonight. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you want to be saved tonight and set free, if you want to know that if you were to die tonight, that you'd spend eternity with God in heaven forever, then when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand all over this room from the front to the very back. If you're saying, that's me, I want you to raise your hand when I count to three. Are we ready? Here we go. One, two, three raise your hand you're saying that's me i'm proud of you i see you back there i'm proud of you i see you right here i'm proud of you anybody else i see you guys back there i'm proud of you anybody else i see you back there we see you we see you we're proud of you anybody else you're saying that's me i want to receive jesus i see all those hands back here in this row over here anybody else you're saying that's me i see you over there we're proud of you we want to do one more thing if you raise your hand tonight we want you to just do one more bold step would you make your way out to the aisle and just come forward and we want to pray with you tonight and we want to congratulate you and we want to celebrate with you and right now church this is where we get really excited this is where we clap for everybody that's giving their life to jesus tonight this is the best decision they'll ever make check in with your neighbor ask your neighbor if you want to go up there i'll go up there with you check in with somebody right now thank you lord there's a new beginning tonight come on they're still coming church let's get excited they're still coming forward yes they're still coming forward hallelujah thank you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus it's a new beginning your new beginning starts tonight for all those that just came up here i just want you to look at me for a second everyone that just came up here just look at me really quick we are going to help you in this walk we're not going to leave you hanging we're going to walk this process with you your next step, the decision you're making tonight, you're going to become born again and saved. You're going to put your faith in Jesus. And your next step is to start your walk with God. Be baptized. We're going to help you get baptized. We're going to celebrate with you. Baptism is it's like an act that shows that we're dying to our old life, going under the water, and we're resurrecting a new creation. How awesome is that? Old sins are gone. Old life is gone. Everything is gone. Get baptized. We're, the, the person in front of you, they're going to sign you up. They're going to pray with you and they're going to help you sign them to get baptized. And then we're going to take you through a class called Holy Warriors. What's the name of the class? Holy Warriors is, is going to teach you how to live out your Christian life, how to be a disciplined Christian, how to pray, how to read your Bible, how to walk with God. What does God say? How do I hear from him? How do I worship? All of these things we're going to teach you and train you. The person in front of you, they're going to pray with you and they're going to get you signed up for the class. Get ready for the greatest years and the greatest season of your life. I'm not saying it's going to be sunshine and daisies, but I promise you this. God is going to be with you and he's not going to leave you and we're not going to leave you and we're going to be right here with you. 
Are we excited for everyone that just gave their life to Jesus tonight? Let's pray. Let's bow our head and let's close our eyes. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, thank you for loving me enough to send your son to die on the cross and raise from the dead so I can be saved. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life up for me. I believe in you. I put my faith in you. I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new creation from the inside out. The, uh, the world looks at the outside, but God, you're looking at the inside. Heal my heart. Transform my mind. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me a new start. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, church, let's give God praise tonight. He's such a good and faithful God. Now, church, this is just part one. Pastor Marco is going to answer some very heavy questions and dive deeper into abortion next Wednesday. You're going to want to invite friends and family. Spread the word. Let people know your church is going to be talking about abortion next Wednesday. And also... This Friday night for all the young adults in the place is the finale of Mission Month. So all the young adults be here Friday night at 7 p.m. with Brian Barcelona, who's been all over the country and the world preaching the gospel. And for all the ladies, remember, sign up tonight for Women's Conference. There's a booth in the foyer, or you can sign up on the app. Don't miss your opportunity to jump in on the Women's Conference. We'll see you guys Sunday for service. We love you, church. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. If you need prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you, church.